Fellas, this has got to be the most fun beta I have ever played. I wish so badly that this MRPG called New World was available right now. Unfortunately, this is just the beta. And you either got a code randomly given out to you, which we actually have a few beta codes that we gave out the other day. Hopefully, we can get some more and give them out on stream. Or you pre-ordered the game, which is what a lot of us did. And that's why we're able to play the beta. Now, the beta is not like a normal beta where you just kind of get in, dabble around with a few missions, and you're done. No. This is a full-blown game. And for the most part, no one has actually even reached the cap. I am well into the game, nearly 40 hours. And again, for most other games, that's the entire playtime. For this game, I am nowhere near the end game. And that's been the question a lot of people say when they come into the streams. They're like, yo, what's the end game like? And it's like, man, I'm 40 hours in and I don't know. I have no idea. Like, I kind of see the end game, but I'm just now starting to get blue items. Which takes us to this point right here. What is New World? Guys, this is an MORPG but with a twist. You see, it's not your normal button smasher MRPG where you target lock, you back up, you hit your combos. No, the combat system is almost similar to Dark Souls. I've had a lot of people say that it reminds them of Guild Wars, Dark Souls, but you have skills similar to RuneScape present in the world of Witcher, which I think is pretty accurate. This world is extremely lush. This is an entire continent where me and like, I don't know how many players, like thousands of players are playing on this one world together. But what I really feel like New World is trying to do is they're trying to bring the elements that have made other great MMORPGs and bring them all together under one umbrella. Let me start first though, where New World begins to set itself apart, and that's actually in the combat system. The combat system is open. You can equip any weapon you want, and the more you play with the weapon, the more experience you accumulate for that specific weapon type. You're playing with a great axe, you're gaining experience toward great axes. The same with hammers, swords, staffs. As you begin to accumulate more and more experience towards these weapons, you can unlock different abilities for these weapons. Now, at first, it goes fast. You pretty much unlock three abilities almost immediately. And that's simply because New World wants you to have three abilities to combat with. But after that, leveling up these weapon types does get very, very grindy. As far as I know, the only way to level up these weapons is actually having combat experience with them. Now, all of this is funneling into your total level. Your total level is important because a lot of things happen whenever you raise your total level, including the ability to stock points in certain categories, to of course increase your damage with those weapon types but even other subtle things like increased mining or harvesting when you reach certain point thresholds this plays a role especially for my skillers and crafters which is a very important part of the ecosystem of this game you have to have crafters and I actually found myself spending a good portion of my time playing this beta just gathering and crafting materials which by the way is extremely satisfying but how you stock these points and depending on those thresholds that you meet this could greatly increase increase your skilling experience in this game, which I think is a lot different than some other games, right? Take Runes game, for instance. You didn't have to get your level up to be a skiller in RuneScape. What New World really tries to push you to do is to be a total player, to not just go out there and kill everything you see, and simultaneously to not become a dedicated miner or a smelter, even though you can do those things, but instead to do everything at once. As you're going to mission to mission, you kill certain animals, you skin them, you come across some iron ore, some silver ore, you mine it. And when you make it back into towns, you could turn those materials by refining it and crafting it. And maybe you'll use those materials for yourself, or maybe you could sell it at the trading post. As yes, there is an open economy in this game, which is a little different than what we've seen in previous games, because the economy is very realistic given the times here. There is no grand exchange. There is no open market between all settlements. Every settlement is its own economy. For instance, if I'm selling arrows in one village it could be 20 cents an arrow but in another village that's at the peak of a war front all of a sudden the arrows go up to two gold per arrow again the market fluctuates depending on which settlement you're at the economy is fragmented in a lot of ways and not only is it fragmented but even your storage when you store materials if you store it in one settlement you cannot go to another settlement and expect to see those same materials present in that storage. Now, on face value, this sounds aggravating. You're telling me I can't just take all these resources that I've gathered throughout the world, put it in a universal bank, and draw from it from within any village.
Village. A common thing that's in most other games, right? But the reason for this is actually because New World wants you to take part in the faction system. Think of factions as guilds. Early on in the main story quest, you will have to choose a faction. You've got Covenant, you got Syndicate, and you got Marauders. Depending on which one of these factions you choose can greatly decide how easy or how hard this game can be for you. Now, it's not like a drastic difference, but just know what I just brought up about storage and pulling items. No, there is no universal pool of items from storage to storage, but if your territory happens to own both the territory that you stored in and the territory that you're present in, then the storage is universal for a cost. You will have to pay some gold to pull those items. But the point I'm trying to make is factions are very important in this aspect because as your faction gains more and more territories, you start to get major benefits for it. Now, how do you get territories? How does a faction accumulate these territories? Well, first up, they have to buy it. I think most territories cost around 100,000 gold. Now, obviously, no one has like 100,000 gold on them right now. But what people have done, especially in my company, is we've actually given money to the company we're in. Think of it as like free companies from Final fantasy but essentially clans and you have a clan coffer in which you can donate money to and when the appropriate amount of funds are raised you can purchase a territory but understand that the only way you can truly own a territory is if you fight for it which actually brings us to the game's pvp system fellas this game is very dynamic it's ever-changing one day you might be looking at the map and your faction owns everything and the next day you're having to fight three different wars on three different fronts and your faction is bleeding from every angle so you might be the richest in the game to purchase these territories but if you don't got the back to defend it the other factions will go to war against you and yes you have to sign up for war you can't just walk up and start swinging there is a war table and when you sign up you'll be given a date and a time and if you're lucky you'll be pulled into a squad to do so now normally if you're just a high enough level you'll get automatically pulled for that war sometimes though companies that are leading that war or leading that battle will look for good team synergies as they're five-man squads for each one of these groups. So if they're looking for a ranged DPS player or a healer or a tank, they'll make those adjustments on their own. Regardless, war is very important because you take over territories and every territory has some benefits. Some are just in a good location that's centered to everything else. Other locations have great resources. Primarily though, the more territories you own, the more tax revenue you have. And the more tax revenue you have, the chances are you'll have a lower tax tax rate than some of the other factions that only have maybe just one territory. This is very important for me as if I'm crafting, trading, or anything else. If the tax rate is low in that area, I'm more inclined to do transactions in that area. And look, this could be a major difference depending on what you're selling. 5% might not sound like much, but the difference between 5% and 2.5% is pretty ginormous when we're talking mega prices on certain items. Again, the game's trying to go for a very realistic vibe here. This intermix between economy, war efforts, taxation, supply and demand. Arguably one of the biggest things that is a realistic scenario in this game is the listing price when you put something on the trade table. This is actually what contributes to prices being lower. You see, if you wanna list something at the trading post, it's not for free and it's by the item per. Meaning if I have 10,000 arrows and I wanna list them for sale, I will be charged per arrow to list them. Meaning if no one buys those arrows, I am out whatever money it costs to put them up, which could be a lot. And the reason why this contributes to prices being lower is because people just don't have enough gold to front the listing prices as the list price is a percentage of your sale price that you choose. This is actually crazy because there is no overwhelming price gouging because it just can't happen yet. At least not yet. I'm still trying to corner the market here, guys. There'll be a way. And there is a lot of ways you can manipulate things in this game. And that's one thing I can say about New World. First impressions, this game is a true open world MMORPG with a ton of weapons to choose from, combinations that sync to all of them, that you can interchange mid-combat if you want to rock a hammer together with a sword, go right ahead. If you want to do ice gauntlet with the fire staff, you're going to run out of mana pretty quickly, but you can do that. If you want to rock a bow and a musket together and never get close to your enemy, have at it. The combat system is very fluid. It allows you to hold two weapons and you can jump back and forth between both of these. And the reason why this beta is so open is because New World wants to find all the busted combinations. And believe me, if there is one thing about New World is that busted combinations are just a part Part of it just like a busted economy at some point someone's gonna figure out how to corner the market in certain areas this game gives me like industrial revolution vibes right it's law
lawlessness. It's ruthlessness. If you want something, you take it. You band a bunch of people together. You wage war. You make it happen. And then after you take certain territories, you can decide. Do you want to tax the peasants for everything they own? Despite this game being a game you could play solo, the MMO aspect of it is fantastic. And as you begin to build up settlements, as you begin to acquire more and more wealth together for your factions, you can start to upgrade your settlements in a multitude of ways. A huge reason for why I actually go from settlement to settlement is actually because of the tier of their crafting. You see, there's crafting stations and refining stations and everything else in between that have certain tiers. And depending on the wealth of your faction and how much that settlement has actually been upgraded, that will decide what tier of those stations are at. And even though you may have the crafting level to make just the godliest, deadliest armor in the game, if you don't have a settlement that doesn't have the tier smelter to allow you to make that material, you can't make that material. From what I've seen in this game, how you get ahead is by taking over settlements, by accumulating as much wealth as you can, by having a strong warring army. Simultaneously though, you cannot forget about your economy. It's hard to fund that army if you have no gold coming in, which is why you send the warriors out to fight the wars and simultaneously you consistently keep upgrading these settlements, making it one of the best crafting hubs for all skillers. And that's the thing. If you have one settlement with high tier crafting, then every crafter in the region on this continent will come to your settlement. And every crafter and gatherer that comes to your settlement, your settlement actually makes money for the items that they make in your settlement due to crafting fees. Although, in my opinion, you don't gouge in this moment. You bring the trade rates down, the tax rate down, the crafting rates down, you make it inviting, you have high tier crafting stations, and the next thing you know, you will have the most blossoming economy in that specific settlement, thus funding any other war operations afar. Guys, overall, New World is a game that allows you to do whatever you want to do. The game is big. It's huge. It also looks like it will be expanded to the north. Like, you can even tell, like, it looks like we have some regions even beyond this. It's not perfect, though. And there are AI that gets bugged. There are bugs in the game that occur. But for a beta to rope me in like this, to pull 40 hours out of me like this, oh, it's something special. Guys, if you're interested in guides for this game, let me know. The full release of it will be the end of the month of August. I suspect that this game, if the trajectory continues, if everything continues to scale in its build crafting, in its combinations, in its enemy depth, in its economies, there's so much to do in this game that will keep you entertained for thousands of hours. More than I've seen from an MMORPG in years. I love Final Fantasy. I love RuneScape. And we've definitely dabbled in other MMOs that are all great games. New Rule seems to have successfully taken something good from a lot of those games and put it into one. If I can just narrow down though what I love the most about New World, it's the ability to lose yourself in the game. You see, that's what makes an MRPG or pretty much any game successful, is that you're consciously aware that you're playing a game and then suddenly you're in the game. Fellas and ladies, thank you all for coming and watching and as always, slap that like button like your mama told you right.